We'd like to call this uh, edition of the Santa Barbara Airport Commission yeah. meeting to order for November 18th, 2009. Here we have the roll call, please. Karen Kahn. Present. Bruce Miller. Here. John Clark. Here. Patricia Griffin. Here. Dolores Johnson. Here. Kirk Martin. Here. Scott Tracy. Here. Are there any changes to the agenda? This is the time for public comment. Any member of the public may address the commission on a subject within our jurisdiction that is not scheduled before them today. Total time is 15 minutes, and I have one speaker slip from Carl Hopkins. Hi, my name is Carl Hopkins. Uh, I'm uh, the vice president of the local EAA, that's Experimental Aircraft Association, Chapter 527. And I just wanted to let you know that uh, this year we have been selected, luckily again, to bring the uh, EAA's B-17 uh, aluminum overcast in. It'll be here April 22nd, that's a Thursday, through April 26th, which is a Monday. As usual, we will have both flights available for purchase, as well as a uh, ground or static tours uh, available to the public. We'll be, I've already contacted the uh, airport management and to work out the various details as to locations and, and other uh, uh, things associated with this. Uh, we will also be working with uh, Tim uh, Lawton on to get as many school kids involved and interested, also be working uh, with the school districts to try to get as many of the uh, the kids involved in uh, in the static tour to teach them a little bit about World War II history. Great, thank you. We're delighted. Do we have a second speaker slip? I think we had a. No, it was withdrawn. <laughs> okay. Do we have? So we have no other public comments. All right. We will move on to the notices. Uh, that the General Aviation Subcommittee met on Monday, October 5th at 1 p.m. in the Airport Administration Building. That the Lease Subcommittee, Lease Review Subcommittee met on Thursday, October 8th at the Airport, Commission, Airport Administration Building. That the regular Airport Commission meeting scheduled for October 21 was canceled. That the Lease Review Subcommittee met as scheduled for Thursday, November 12th was canceled that the Budget Subcommittee met on Thursday, November 12th at 2 p.m. in the Airport Administration Building, and finally that on Thursday, November 12th, the Airport Commission Secretary duly posted this agenda on the board, <coughs> board at the Airport Administration, which brings us to the consent calendar. Do we have any discussion concerning the consent calendar or a motion to move it? Approve it. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay, that carries. Moving on to our liaison reports. We have our uh, two liaison <coughs> officials here, Ed Easton. Would you like to uh, say anything? If you can decline. <laughs> <laughs> you can just say welcome. I've... I've, I've. I think I've established so far a tradition that I say something that makes you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're smiling because we're glad you're here. Um, and I'm just going to say, I don't have much to say because I was doing city business until uh, 11.30 last night, um, which makes me think, and, and I just want to pose this for you. Uh, I was commenting on the hour, hours we spent doing city business with Margaret Connell, who some of you may know. Uh, who was our first mayor in Goleta, and she commented to me that, Ed, it's the glory. <laughs> <laughs> and I took that uh, as it was intended, mm -hmm. and I realized that uh, if any of you aren't feeling the glory of your position, <laughs> you could you could go on till 11.30 some night, and maybe you might get there. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate your dedication and, and hope you feel the glory. Yeah. So is 11.30 when you feel the glory? Yeah. Actually, we finished a major project, which is we don't have any more changes coming to the general plan. And so a number of us went out and drank some glory. Oh! <laughs> 
Okay. Well, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> and I uh, understand that couldn't be heard by the television viewing audience because you weren't on the mic. That's very good. <laughs> well done. Uh, I won't repeat it. Uh, Grant House, your liaison from City Council. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, as you know, we had our election and we have a, a new mayor uh, elect, uh, Helene Schneider. Um, I've been reelected uh, and will be with you hopefully for another four years. Um, and I really do enjoy uh, being your liaison. And we have uh, three new city council members, uh, Bindi White and Frank Hotchkiss and uh, Michael Self. And so they'll be joining us on January 12th. Uh, on the council, we just uh, finished um, getting uh, balancing against the um, uh, last pieces of uh, loss, if you will, from last year. And so for our budget, we've uh, managed to get all that put together in a package and put it to bed. So. Um, 2008 and 2009 is over. Um, financially, we have that handled. Now we're looking forward, and we are continuing to experience um, uh, declines in our sales tax revenue and transient occupancy tax. Um, uh, property tax remains um, constant still, fortunately. Um, so we're um, looking forward now. We're, we're working on um, this current year as well as um, 2010, 2011, and trying to look ahead and make the uh, uh, provisions for that. So we'll be working on that. Fortunately, uh, the airport is an enterprise fund, and um, we're um, hoping things hold up well. And of course, we'll get the reports, uh, uh, some of that tonight. Um, I, I did want to say that um, um, we're excited in the extreme about the terminal. And being there for the uh, groundbreaking and all, it was just really a wonderful experience. And um, all of us in the city are very uh, excited about how this is going to go come forth. I personally want to say I'm very excited that we're able to um, uh, get the um, uh, sky bridges, in particular the, the new, more advanced, cool glass ones or whatever. They're just so beautiful. And the art that's going to be included in this. So it's uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, um, reason to celebrate and be excited about the airport and uh, more reason for me to enjoy being your liaison. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I am here for you for city council issues. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. And congratulations. That brings us to administrative reports. <laughs> Executive has no privilege. <laughs> She's always trying to steal my thunder. <laughs> you must be in a humorous mood tonight. Uh, well, the moment we've all been waiting for is the tea hanger lottery. <laughs> so I'll turn it over to Chair Khan. Well, I thought we would first describe a little bit about what we're doing here, which will help those watching. Uh, what we have now is we're going to be conducting a lottery to replenish the uh, tea hanger waiting list. The former waiting list is exhausted, and we have nine applicants who are, should we say, represented by nine small round disks in our little rat cage there, if we <laughs> race. And there are currently three vacant hangers, and the first three chosen out of the uh, hopper will be offered a hanger. And there is additional tea hanger information available on the website flysba.com under the general aviation tab. Uh, very quickly for the lottery, we've got balls one through nine. They're already in the hopper. The uh, assigned numbers we will read out and they correspond to um, each of the nine applicants. And uh, once again, we'll mix up the hopper and then we will have another commissioner verbally verify that the balls as they come out will announce the winner's name and we will use some labels that have been pre-printed to put them up there on the list. Does anybody have a suggestion as to how we do this this important chore? <laughs> um, I would say it would be similar to Dancing with the Stars in no particular order. <laughs> All right. <laughs> do I have a volunteer from the commission? Dolores? Since you are leaving, <laughs> why don't you and I, as the two departing members okay. of the commission, perform this event <laughs> in team? <laughs> okay, so what I will. Um, Is this to a rumba? <laughs> Something exciting. This would be the I guess may we have the envelope, please? If if we could have somebody bring us the rat cage, okay. we will uh, 
Okay, <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, so you're not an applicant in that. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 One of those people is going to be my neighbor. <laughs> so my understanding is we have one person to turn the crank here, and the other, and at the appropriate time, the ball will fall down at the race, and you get to read the number. Okay. So. Yeah, this is a, this is a big problem. And this is a week. <laughs> right. Oops. <laughs> Screwed it up already. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you can tell that this is obviously not in my job description. I think we have. I think we have the first two. So I'm going to pick the first one, and I'm going to hand it to you. Okay. And you can tell us what number that is. It's number one. That is number one. Mm -hmm. And that is Glenn Scott. Uh, he will be offered a hanger for uh, November six five five one five. All right, number two is here. <laughs> you have to be ceremonious. Here. <laughs> Wait, oh, no. <laughs> number seven, if you read it upside down, it's another one, but it's a seven. <laughs> uh, number seven is Rab Air LLC 877 Delta Romeo. It's coming out. Okay. All right. All right. <coughs> Very ceremonial. Yeah, yeah. Number two. Next one is number two, Decathlon Aviation with November 335 yeah. Delta Sierra. Number six. Number six, which is Ronald Hayes, 4312 Sierra. Here we go. <laughs> Seems like we should be announcing Number some nine. big trip. Number nine, which is Robert Gates, 555 Romeo Delta. Probably figure this out at the end of the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is high science, you know. Just catches there, you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kurt, what do we have here? Number five. Number five is Taylor, Trent, and Haugen, Incorporated, 32645. Number three. Number three is Robin S. Gauss, one six one two six two zero. Number four. Number four is Kevin Jenkins, November four seven three six Echo. The suspense is. <laughs> we have to make sure we get the. Uh, Open right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Oh Some my God! Here we, here we. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's, it's tough to have a. And the. <laughs> number eight. Number eight is Terrence Cunningham, one eight five. A regular the street. old waiting list would never be so much fun. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wait, so, have fun doing darn near anything. So with okay. that, my congratulations to all of you. <laughs> I put them back. I wonder where you got this machine. Bingo. Is that a bingo machine? We have 30 of them, too. It's <laughs> cool. It's good. All right, wonderful. That's all relevant. That's right. Okay, moving on to the administrative reports. Looks like we have come to item number 14, amendments to the tea hanger rules and regulations. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mabel's going to turn us on. There we go. Huh. OK. 
Okay, good. Thank you. Um, the um, item before you is a recommendation to approve the amendments as shown on exhibits A and B to your uh, uh, agenda report. Uh, number one is T-Hanger Rules and Regulations, and number two, uh, T-Hanger Waiting List Policy and Procedures. You'll recall last time we were asked to separate those two and not make it one motion, but to have two separate ones. So uh, we did that. I want to give just a, a little bit of background once again on the T-Hanger program and how we developed it over the years. Um, we started off with draft um, documents uh, prepared by airport staff. We held two pilot meetings, shared the information on the rules and regs, the waiting list policy, along with the permit for the actual T-Hanger. Uh, we also met with General Aviation Subcommittee and then Airport Commission in April 2006 unanimously approved all of the documents and then following that we had the first lottery, uh, well sorry, then we went to City Council and had City Council also adopt by resolution the, the rules and regs and the waiting list policy. We did not have the permit uh, per se go to City Council. Right. <laughs> uh, and then we had our lottery uh, in November, about the same time, three years ago. And according to the waiting list policy, we um, had all of the applicants um, do as you did tonight. We verified their applications, that they were complete. We picked 25 applicants, and then we also had, uh, I'm sorry, 24 for the tea hangers, and then 25 for the waiting list. There were some individuals who were um, uh, certified applicants who were not put on that list. I believe there were four, three, who were not put on that list. Then in August of this year, we went forward, we rented the tea hangers out, and um, we have gone through the list. The economy this past year has really had an impact, so we've had a, a, a turnover. Last August, we came in at that time, we had 10 people on the list at that point. Uh, today we have no one on the list. We've already gone through the list, and as you know, you heard tonight, we still have three vacant hangers. Um, so we knew that we needed to do another lottery, according with the, uh, in accordance with the waiting list policy. We went to General Aviation Subcommittee uh, last August 19th, discussed the changes in the rules and regs as well as the waiting list policy, and uh, said that we needed to go ahead, at least at this point, and conduct a lottery so that we could get back. Uh, get all of our uh, tea hangers uh, filled. Uh, we took that recommendation to Airport Commission in September, and at that time we requested, uh, Airport Commission requested that the policies be separated, one and two. Uh, we received additional uh, input from um, the audience as well as Airport Commission, and at that time Airport Commission moved that we defer this item until all commissioners could be here to uh, make a determination. We also had another General Aviation Subcommittee meeting on October 5th, and um, Carl joined us at that meeting, uh, and we had full, I believe we had all of the GA members there at the time. Um, and at that point, we went through the, the recommendations for the um, T-Hanger rules and regs, and there had been a couple of three things that had been identified that we wanted to uh, provide additional clarification, one of which was the airworthiness of the uh, aircraft. And in the proposed rules initially, we said it had to go through a repair station. That was really not what we intended. We just wanted to change the language that says the aircraft owner has to provide the records, not the aircraft to provide the records. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we also added, um, we had information about the pilot's lounge that was there and wanted to distribute keys. We went ahead and did that with all of the um, pilots. And then we also wanted to clarify the extension cord because Gordon had raised that issue. And we talked with the fire department, got that clarified, and in the, the revised uh, documents that you have, we do indicate that the uh, extension cord needs to be used for temporary purposes, any permanent uh, ex electrical need needs to have an alteration. You can't just use the extension cord forever. We also looked at the waiting list policies and talked about the lottery system again. Um, we prefer that the lottery system continue. There was 
uh, a lot of concern about the, the number of people that could be on the waiting list. Why do we need a cap and why not just have a, a, a walk up, first come, first serve kind of list? And um, so our recommendations are that we continue the lottery, that we remove the cap on the waiting list, that it's no longer 25 as a, a maximum, it can be whatever, that we hold the lottery annually or at such time as we have 10 names or less on the list, and that the applicants selected at the periodic lottery uh, will be added to the end of the waiting list. So if we have four left tonight or eight tonight or seven tonight, we do another lottery, we add, they begin after that number and we just keep adding to it. We also wanted to verify that those people that are on the lottery are still interested. So we have an annual renewal fee of $50 and we also want to verify that they have a, um, an aircraft, an airworthy aircraft. So that's our recommendation tonight. Um, and the, the subcommittee agreed and recommended that the changes that we're proposing be approved by Airport Commission. We're available for questions. Do we have any questions? <coughs> Ms. Part about the barbecuing. <laughs> I think you still have to have permission. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, given these numbers, I suppose it's not unreasonable to think that the waiting list will be under 10 names. Yeah. So we will have and we have the potential of having monthly lotteries. Mm -hmm. well, you might advertise it so it would be <laughs> quarterly. Oh, okay. So the economy improves. <laughs> I see we have someone in the audience. Carl, go ahead. Well, Noticing that, I was just going to suggest that you might want to change it to, but not more often than quarterly or something like that, so you don't have to do this every month, although it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For some. <laughs> well, I must say uh, the idea of having an annual lottery uh, has certainly uh, addressed one of my main concerns, that it would happen annually no matter what, so people weren't just wondering when the next time it was. Yeah. Any other questions? Discussion? I believe that we probably do need to identify that it would be quarterly. Um, we would need to make that clear going forward. The nice thing is that we have records and we are clear on these things, and so there would be no question. So, mm -hmm. We can make that change, certainly. Any other comments? Do I have a motion regarding this issue? I make a motion that we would accept it as amended. I'd second. Okay. Any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Which brings us on to the general aviation landing fees, item 15. <laughs> well. Give me my mic. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Later, boss. <laughs> yeah. This item was also deferred at the uh, September. Um, Airport Commission meeting uh, so that we could bring back additional information. Um, the proposal uh, was presented and we wanted to establish an equitable system first of all. We also wanted to uh, look to recover more um, of the cost, generate a revenue source that would recover more of the cost for airfield expenses. And we also illustrated that the total cost was about $3.5 million in the last fiscal year for airfield costs. We're getting about a million one in landing fees from commercial aviation. Um, and the costs that go from general aviation for the airfield are fuel flowage fees. And last year that was $130,000. So we have a shortfall. And um, so we had proposed um, a general aviation landing fee Commission and also uh, public comment uh, requested that we clarify the definition of the aircraft to be assessed that fee and that we provide a fee waiver for nonprofit organizations and that commission, as I said, uh, referred this to the General Aviation Subcommittee. The committee met uh, the same meeting on October 5th. We addressed both issues. 
and we revised the description of non-based aircraft um, and endorsed commission's recommendation on exemptions. So the revised policy, proposed policy, uh, would still be effective January 1, 2010. But we're saying that we'd like to collect a landing fee from all Part 135 operations and non-based aircraft weighing 10,000 pounds or greater. And non-based aircraft is defined as um, all aircraft not listed on the annual Santa Barbara County Unsecured Property Assessment and Taxation System, <laughs> California Department of Aeronautics Report of Aircraft. That's a report that the airport and the city submits to the county on an annual basis in, in January. We would uh, include exemptions for specifics, angel flights, lifeguard, medical emergency, federal, state, and military aircraft, and also incorporate um, the authority for the airport director to waive fees for any reason that is uh, she deems necessary or he in the future might deem necessary. Um, we also met again with the FBOs. We talked with Signature and with Atlantic about the method of collection of the landing fee. We have a draft agreement with the FBOs to collect the fee report and remit the payment and then for their um, efforts, then they would maintain 10 percent of the, the revenue uh, to cover their administrative costs. We want to do a public information program to distribute uh, through a GA newsletter that we're hoping to get out by mid-December. Um, and we would also provide documents and um, flyers for the FBOs and, and uh, Stratman Aero uh, talk or provide it to GA pilot groups, Fisher Center, and the FAA uh, facility directory. We've had three meetings with the General Aviation Subcommittee over the past year in March, April, and October. And uh, the October meeting, the uh, committee unanimously recommended the approval of the landing <coughs> fee as revised. Do we have any discussion <coughs> on the issue? Any comments? I wanted to say thank you for all the work you guys have done on this and the other proposals and for um, more clearly defining what it applies to. My question is that Santa Barbara County tax record, does that include aircraft that are based on other airports in Santa Barbara County? Because they would show up on the tax record if they're based in Santa Maria or San Inez. Does that apply to other aircraft? Not unless they're based at Santa Barbara. Based at Santa Barbara. <laughs> but you're correct. They are on that list, but we get the list changed for us so that we identify those planes on, on our field. I'm curious to know, I, your shortfall of 2.7 million, how does that compare to years past or has this been a continuing, I mean if we look back historically, have we in the last five years been ramping up the loss or? I don't, I don't know that the loss has been ramped up so much, but it has always been there. Uh, when we've done airline rates and charges, and you'll recall that chart where we do the landing fee, we identify the the uh, cost centers, the ARF, the expense for ARF, for maintenance on the field, and then we look at the number of operations that we have with the airlines um, and determine what really should be allocated to airline use and then other and other is general aviation, and all of general aviation. Uh, we have changed the um, commercial to also include charter. Re you'll remember that we did that a few years back so that they also are paying uh, into the uh, uh, commercial landing fee. But the, the differential there has always, there has always been um, a large sum of money uh, that's been uncovered. So it had been one of our requests to include an exclusion for historic aircraft operated by nonprofits for display, um, and that is not in the, the new restated policy. The airport direct, because at one point we could list a, you know, a million different things to exempt. So, as a summary, we just elected to have the airport director waive the fee, 
for any and, and all occasions or events or because it might not just be things that we list. We don't want to be just tied to that. So that's why we didn't go on and list the others. We do agree to do that, but it would be under her waiver. And it would be clear to the FBOs that there would be a, a mechanism for mm -hmm. somebody to come in and request that without too much. I could imagine that uh, a lot of folks might be intimidated by the idea of trying to contact the airport's director. <laughs> Yeah, can I? <laughs> <laughs> There'll probably be a fee for it. <laughs> um, right now, when we had, uh, used to have the air show, and when we've had, um, uh, like, World War II aircraft come in for display, oftentimes I'll waive the fuel flowage fee if they buy fuel. And then I just give a written documentation to the FBO for their records as well as our audit. And... So it's an established work, mechanism. Yeah, it works very informed or easily. And and you don't find yourself to be intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone on for years. <laughs> yes. Um, just a question, I, and I didn't uh, see the report. Did you uh, indicate what the difference you think this will make in terms of the uh, the shortfall? What kind of a change this will make? I uh, guess we did uh, last month we did that in, and um, initially it appears that it would be between a quarter of a million and three hundred thousand dollars a year so Impro we're still improvement to improvement. the situation uh -huh. I see correct. and do we have plans to um, uh, other ways to recover more of of the the shortfall besides this And I'm asking, by the way, I'm asking that in the context that council has been uh, looking at the different departments, not the, mm -hmm. I mean, we're not talking about just the enterprise funds, but for full cost recovery wherever we can. And so that's the context in which I'm asking the question. I appreciate that. And as Karen just pointed out to me, the, in the past, that shortfall has been covered by commercial industrial properties oh, revenue. Um, and we are seeking, we will always seek new revenues when we can. Um, and especially because we have debt service now. So that's something that we have never had before, and it's really important for us to generate as much revenue as possible. Okay, so we're looking at about 300000 or so uh, improvement over the current situation. Yes. All right, that's thank correct. you very much. Uh -huh. But to be clear, airport operations are, are as a whole, are not operating at a loss. It's simply that correct. the airfield operations are, in effect, being subsidized by commercial real estate operations. That's correct. Thank you. Any other comments? Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. I'll second it. Okay. Is there any discussion? It's been moved and seconded that we approve the uh, recommendation for the uh, landing fee. Do I, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Okay. Uh, show one, one opposed. Um, any abstentions? Okay. And the motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to the airport rental adjustments. And with that, we have two commissioners who are affected by this particular issue, so we will ask them to recuse themselves <laughs> and depart <laughs> the area. <laughs> we don't have to leave. Yes, they do. Oh, do they? Yes. Yeah. And they can't sit in the audience and make faces. Smart remarks. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice coffee break. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is an item uh, for Airport Commission to authorize the Airport Director to waive annual cost uh, of CPI increases for month-to-month -month tenants for the period beginning September 1, 2009 and ending August 31, 2010. Um, we have previously uh, taken to Airport Commission Lease Review Subcommittee a request um, to work with our existing tenant base um, to try to find ways to offset the economic crisis that uh, it seems to continue to uh, plague some of our tenants. Um, and prior to this particular discussion, uh, the Lease Review Subcommittee concurred with staff's recommendation that we work with term tenants 
to reduce their premises when we can um, and make an amendment to their lease to assist with um, cost reductions for them. For the month-to-month -month tenants, all of those leases say that annually on your anniversary date, you're subject to a cost of living uh, adjustment of 3% as the, the minimum, and, but no greater than 8%. Um, little did we know that the cost of living would go below the line, and in some cases, um, it was substantial. I mean, uh, we were doing a 3% increase for someone, and the, the CPI was 27 below the line. So it was, it was not, um, not really uh, what we anticipated doing in the past. So we uh, gathered information from the Goleta Economic Conference that was held um, earlier this fall. Um, we've talked with real estate, uh, commercial industrial real estate brokers in town, and understand that the prices, the, the rental rates are coming down. Our properties, because we have that rate, um, um, what do I want to say? We have a margin here between the low and the high. So we are able to negotiate on our properties between um, the very lowest level or the highest level based on the property. Um, and that gives us that flexibility that perhaps others don't have. But we have had airport tenants call, and they're very concerned about the increases. And it's difficult without changing a policy to just negotiate something because that's what the lease says. So we are coming to Airport Commissioner Winter to Lease Review Subcommittee uh, in October and presented the idea that we just waive the cost of living for one year and for all month-to-month -month tenants. And we have a majority of our tenants, I believe, are on month-to-month -month leases, and those are storage yards and um, small small business is really what we're talking about. And we included the tea hangers in that um, the airport is already from our general revenues. We're subsidizing the tea hanger program. Remember, for at least the first seven years, so it's just a touch more money that we would lose. That's why <laughs> we have two missers out. Um, the fiscal impact would be about $19,000, 198 in the first year of 2010, between now and June 30th. And then in 2011, it would be an additional $18,000. We feel that's not a significant amount, but the goodwill and hopefully uh, what we will generate from um, maintaining our tenant base uh, is important. And so we would ask the Airport Commission to approve that change in policy to allow us to waive um, annual cost of living increases for month-to-month -month tenants. Are there any questions? This is for one year, correct? That's correct, ending August uh, 31, 2010. Any comments? Questions or comments regarding this issue? Have there been, um, forgive me, but have there been any um, statements that if this were not the case, we would lose a tenant? Um, actually, yes, and we have lost some tenants. Um, we've had turnover, but some of them have, you remember a year ago we were talking about tenants who had multiple properties with the airport or with downtown and we were an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary property, they were consolidating. So we've had consolidation, and we've had some tenants who just can't make it, and so they've gone. But, and and uh, that was irrespective of the increase? It pretty much happened, at, and Rebecca's here, she can speak to this more so than I can probably, but it, it generally it happens when the, the letter goes out saying, here's your annual increase. Okay. So um, I've handled calls from at least three tenants, uh, and I'm sure Rebecca and also Desi, who does the um, billing, has also had tenants call. And not the same ones, <laughs> but different ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Do I hear a motion regarding this issue? I move for acceptance. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. And we can invite them to return. 
<laughs> we're going to have to, you're right. <laughs> well, I'm sure they want to hear about the capital improvement program. <laughs> we can catch it on TV. We have to find them. We made it all the way to the bar. You want to load the new price on your hammer. Oh. <laughs> it's lower. This is good. Don't tell them that. It's lower than it could have been. That's right. I wish. And moving on to item 17, the capital improvement program. Oh. <laughs> I vote we uh, we authorize funds for the digital <laughs> micro. What's <laughs> names on? That would be nice. Um, <laughs> as you know, uh, every two years or every year, depending on how the uh, city is uh, conducting its budget cycle, uh, one of the first things that we do is establish our capital uh, plan improvement plan uh, for the next six, six years mm -hmm. six years and um, of course when we actually do our budgeting we pay the most attention to the two-year budget that will be actually preparing the operational budget for um, tonight uh, Tracy Lincoln has been elected to present to you the capital improvement plan um, for 2011 through 2016, and uh, the uh, budget subcommittee did uh, meet and uh, reviewed the, the overall plan and the projects for the first two years. So, almost okay. as much of an honor as the integrated pest management. <laughs> 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 Tracy does that. <laughs> He got a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong with this picture. <laughs> there you go. That's the consolation prize. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, we had to minutes. bribe it with something. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll jump right into it. A couple of quick uh, definitions and outlines the, regarding capital project: a value of one hundred thousand dollars or more, life expectancy of more than five years, relative long-term planning document, five to six years, with the as. Um, the director mentioned with more focus on the first two years immediately. Uh, it is it has been updated annually, or it always is, and we're focusing on those first 2011 and 2012 projects. And these projects annually have always included some standard ones that you'll see each year are the maintenance of our airport assets, infrastructure upgrade and replacement, and most of that has been utility uh, uh, infrastructure in this particular case and then taxiway and ramp improvements. <laughs> it worked. The, uh, the, the total capital improvement program for 2011, 1,090,000, and fiscal year 2012, again, about 816,000 close. And you can see the total is just under 2 million there, 1.9. I'll change lines up. One of the... Uh, <laughs> oh, did you... Oh, okay, yeah, thank you, ma'am. This is this will be one of the buildings we do. The currently, excuse me, we've got this programmed for two years out. Next year will be design. The year after that will be construction. This is building 225. It's on the north side in our industrial area. It's fully occupied. It has three tenants, and there was a feasibility study done a few years, of probably seven eight years ago. We did two other buildings in this immediate area and we want to bring this one up to standard and um, it's going to be a good project and we're looking forward to it. Tracy, real oh. quickly, is that just an external or is there a lot of internal work as well? A little bit of internal, more more external. And With through the these... Windows and other energy I, the words were just coming out of my mouth through all of these and honestly they were through all of these improvements we will be looking at uh, opportunities to provide much more energy efficient um, insulation air conditioning windows what have you ADA restrooms yes <laughs> yes that also you the, go yeah. ahead okay I'd explain this project, but that picture explains it pretty well. Um, we are going to provide drainage. We currently, right now as we speak, have money budgeted and have begun design. And then next year there is money 
540,000 to provide drainage in there to rid us of that situation, which it does not take a lot of rain for it to get there. So that this is a good project that those tenants are very much looking forward to. <coughs> or a rowboat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, although this might not look like much, it's important. Yeah. This is the this is the wash rack that is adjacent the tour center just across from Station 8. And one of the best management practices to clean up storm water is to provide areas where you can wash vehicles and equipment and the new ARF units that we, I'm sorry, the new aircraft rescue and firefighting units that we produced some years, we purchased in 04, I believe it was, 03 or 04, are a little too big for this and this was one of the things that was designed for them years ago. So we will be upgrading so that this is a wash rack so that they can wash their vehicles here. It's right across the street. It's a best management practice for stormwater. It goes through the, the drainage, goes through a clarifier, is connected to the sanitary sewer, and it's, um, it, it's sorely needed and it's going to be a good project. And we, um, the fire department's looking forward to it. <laughs> Are we? These are the maintenance of the building assets. We do 150,000 each year right now. We take a look at the buildings, and the ones we just looked at are coming out of this pot of money. And then the street resurfacing program, these are all the airport streets, not Hollister and Fairview, which are maintained downtown by Public Works, but we're talking the streets that have the names of all of our um, historic soldiers on them and we have a pavement maintenance program we slur them frequently and grind out as you might imagine and that's what this addresses the hazardous materials program is money used when we go in to do these rehabs we have lead and other things and many times we use this money or removing asbestos tiles to deal with those situations I mentioned at the beginning the airport infrastructure is mainly utility infrastructure with water and sewer and what have you and wash rack and things like that will come out of this as well as redoing some manholes. We've still got some old manholes that are brick and some of them are, as you might imagine, starting to erode and we will line those with concrete and we have a replace, we're getting a replacement program together for the last old manholes and a couple other uh, important. AOA pavement, we have a pavement maintenance program. It's required by the FAA. We do frequent pavement inspections, and we program out your basic maintenance. It's crack fillings, slurry, it's things like that. The, the total is uh, 550000 and for each year, and they're very important kind of programmed projects so that we can keep up with the maintenance. These are the FAA projects we have. We turn in a capital improvement program each year that's updated to the Federal Aviation Administration. The Federal Aviation Administration also funds capital projects, excuse me, purchases. And we purchased a sweeper with FAA money, I believe it was 98, and that sweeper has come to the end of its useful life. The FAA, in speaking with them, has said that they We'll fund a new one as soon as they manage to get an AIP bill passed, and we're really hoping for that in January. And this is just, this is not the exact one we will buy, but I just wanted to provide a sample. This is used for removing debris from taxiways, runways. This is also a very important element of our uh, storm water program because sweeping runways, taxiway streets is one of the single best things you can do to clean up storm water because of, Break dust, carbon, you can look at a runway, it'll look clean, but it, um, it's there. And when it washes off into the drains, that's not good. So it's a very good purchase on many aspects. Taxiway Charlie, Hotel, and Juliet, those are the three that have, <clears throat> excuse me, it has been the longest since they were redone. The pavement maintenance program has shown it is time to do some work. <coughs> and um, we will do the all three taxiways over a span of two years. And it's not just design and construction. See, these are blended costs because of the timing of when we receive funds. But this is the total cost. We will, this is more than just a slurry. They'll probably grind out some and redo like the top layer. And we will also add shoulders. 
Adding shoulders is very important. It cuts down the amount of fuel we're going to burn with a tractor because we need to mow out there. It cuts down the amount of pesticides we need to spray because right now the lights are on an infield area and weeds grow up over the lights and you're not allowed to obscure lights. We need people to see them, so we do a lot of spraying. So it cuts down our maintenance hours maintaining them and uh, that's a big plus for us and we like to think that's a pretty green move also. Is there any uh, desire to extend Charlie also? Would that be part of this? That is not part of this project. No, no this is just a redo of the existing. The uh, <clears throat> airport master plan is also the FAA recommends you redo it every five to ten years. I believe our last master plan was f approved in 02, was it? Yeah, 02. So it's time, and the FAA treats it as a, even though it's a planning project, it is a capital project, and they do fund those. And they're expensive. Whoa. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is the layout of what it looks like so you can see the years that we have planned on some of these projects. I won't read them all to you because I can't actually read the screen, <laughs> but um, I'll leave it up for a minute so you can see how we have some of these programs. And we reevaluate each year, so sometimes you, you end up moving things into different years if something occurs, but we like to take a shot at this uh, programming. The budget subcommittee reviewed this capital program on November 12th and uh, the commission comments. We are seeking your comments on this project and we will forward those comments to City Council. Are there any comments? Thank you. Questions? I would say I was glad to see that there are definitely projects in there that uh, are helpful for the environment. Uh, one that you mentioned, that the maintenance yard uh, route to prevent rain from uh, washing uh, vehicle soil and debris into the wetlands. And, uh, Thank you for mentioning that. That's a, These environmental projects are good projects. I noticed the uh, maintenance figures were static across the years. Um, is that just a memo figure, or is there an anticipated um, percentage raise due to cost increases over those years? I can let uh, Ms. Johns comment on that, but with uh, we're, we've been able to manage these assets well with that amount of money. And in doing the inspections and what have you, we think things come up and we may need to appropriate some more, but we think these numbers will work for this planning period. She can't comment. She doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> 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 Any we have had these, uh, the, the cost for the routine ordinary maintenance, that's what I call them, annual uh, numbers. They have been higher in the past, um, but we have, for the last couple of years, we've had maintained this dollar amount. And we're really trying to keep our overall cost for airport funded capital to a million dollars or less per year, especially until we get through the initial occupancy of the new terminal and then see where we fall out with uh, additional revenues. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. but one of the items, one of the ways that we use the money is that we design, and then if we need um, additional money, then we do the construction in the summer. So we have access to $2,010 and also 2011 because we're doing it in July and August. So mm -hmm. that's how we've kind of coupled the dollars to make projects work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably worthwhile noting that there were projects even on this year's budget that were proposed last year that were put off for uh, financial reasons. Or other. That's correct. That's correct. Madam Chair, um, I wanted to also uh, mention on the master plan uh, update that going into the, to this, I guess, new update, uh, general aviation facilities will be a large focus of it, as you know. Um, our long-term plan is to move general aviation over to the north side of the field and um, kind of dedicate the 
southern portion of the field to um, commercial aviation. So that will, there'll be a lot of work that will be done um, in terms of planning what that will be for the future. And as you know, our FBO leases expire in 2013, so um, this is, you know, all timed uh, for that. And then also, whatever needed facilities that we need on the airfield um, that are uh, needed, whether I know my staff is very interested in looking at it, extension of uh, taxiway hotel, and uh, okay. I <laughs> th after I retire, they may uh, <laughs> move on with that. I did my environmental uh, duty <laughs> with the uh, runway safety area project. But uh, all kidding aside, uh, but those kinds of facilities will be looked at, and there'll be, of course, a lot of public participation and um, our user stakeholder participation as well. So there's never, you know, we have to plan our work for the next 10 years. <laughs> okay. Councilman House, you have a comment? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the Commission, uh, Grant House, I just, uh, I just, I believe that it's going to be of interest to the Council to know about any deferred. Um, maintenance or any deferred projects um, due to the economic uh, situation. Um, it's uh, it, it's of concern because we're trying to look ahead and and to be sure that we're beginning to make plans for th that kind of thing, and uh, that it doesn't catch up to us at some point. So I think that would be uh, something you would probably want to really include in the report. And I also uh, I think that your comments, uh, Mr. Lincoln, about the. Um, the environmental benefits of, of these things are really well received with council with their sustainability emphasis. That's it. Any other comments? Questions? And are we looking for a motion to forward this program? Okay, do I hear a motion? I would move for approval. Okay. Acceptance. Would second it? Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that brings us to the director's report. The best part. <laughs> <laughs> Before we, um, I get into it, uh, the actual items of the director's report. Do you want to put that? Um, in previous reports, we had on here our thermal uh, image camera project. Is that how you say it? Yeah, which we uh, completed. But our um, security people uh, gave me a sample of what that looks like. And I think that's a raccoon. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's a raccoon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That or, or a uh, possum. Possum. Possums. Possum. Family of po po possums. Possums. Yeah. Asian. Like it's watching the camera. But had those been people, we would yeah. have been able to see. <laughs> where, where is that? Is well, that I can't tell you, oh, or I'll have is. to do away with me. Um, but it, the cameras are on areas by the creeks where huh. um, we don't have fencing. So, okay. where the animals live. There we go. Yeah, where the animals are. Well, it seems to be working. It does. Yes. I just thought you'd get a kick out of it. Yeah, that is great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is that on the uh, airport website? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Name that spot. The the <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, our passenger count for October was down 5.4 percent, and we're down uh, year to date uh, 9.9 .9 or almost 10 percent. Um, hopefully, by the beginning of next year, we'll start to see some minor recovery. Uh, I've noticed. You know, we've mentioned um, John Wayne Airport. You know, we've been watching that for the last couple of years, and they were into double-digit decreases the year before we started having decreases, and now I'm starting to see a little bit of gain on their part. So, of course, they have Southwest and JetBlue, Jet so that helps. Um, but so we'll, we'll keep watching it, but hopefully um, it will start coming back uh, in the next year. Uh, the terminal project, uh, I thought we had a great groundbreaking ceremony. Um, appreciated our council and the Glita City Council um, attending. That was uh, really nice. And um, I just thought it was Terry Gibson on our staff really planned a great, great fun event. 
And now uh, you can see the utility works being done, and pretty soon we'll start actually see something coming out of the ground. So mm -hmm. um, we're just as excited as city council is <laughs> <laughs> to see this. Um, under promotional items, I wanted to mention that we are now the official airport of UCSB Athletics. <laughs> um, we inaugurated this with the soccer game that was a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, one of our staff people attended and they got to throw out the, the ball and of course all the students threw their tortillas and <laughs> applauded as, at uh, the announcement of the airport as being the official airport of the UCSB Athletics. <laughs> Was there a close competition with the... <laughs> I have no idea what that Well said, <laughs> You've got to get your, take your honors where you can get them. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <You have it. laughs> um, our uh, self-serve fueling project has uh, gotten planning commission approval and ABR approval, and now they're in the process of being uh, submitting their plans for um, to the building department for building permit. So I don't know that they've actually done that yet, have they? No, they're still waiting, I think, on planning commission um, oh, conditions of approval to go on the plan. Right. After they get planning commission approval, you have to get their written minutes of their conditions, and that takes some time. So things are moving along, which is... Karen, uh, I have a good. question on that. Mm -hmm. Once they get all the permits, how long will it take for them to finish the project? I don't think it'll take very long. I don't uh, think so either. Because it's more or less a, a tank that they just... You know, bring into place with some uh, groundwork that, that that they need to. So, do what kind piping. of time frame are we? Next four months or something like I'd that? I'd say in the springtime. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's utility do. work too. Yeah. Right. To mm -hmm. Right. And it takes at least six weeks, maybe eight weeks or more, to get a building permit. So. Um, and the holidays probably. Be there. Right. So I'm not sure, um, you know, how that will affect their timeline. Um, Let's see if that. The uh, rental car quick turnaround facility is done. And the rental cars just submitted all their permit requirements to county fire and now have keys to the kingdom over there <laughs> and will be moving in. Um, <clears throat> the uh, You can go online and see the uh, solar panel, the elect power use. Um, do you know the website? I don't have it, but we, we can forward we'll it to We'll forward it to you. Yes. Jeff, do you know it? No, no. no. Okay, well, we'll forward it to you. Um, right now, you can just see the, the uh, energy that's being um, generated, but pretty soon you'll be able to see the, the use and what's being generated. So it's, it's pretty cool. To, it also shows the carbon saved by generating oh, that great. and it gives you really neat little stats that so you can relate to the tons of carbon that have been saved. When we uh, get our uh, lead um, rating mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a little ceremony ribbon cutting for the facility so that we can announce what our rating is. Uh, as you know our goal was uh, silver but um, I think we look pretty good for gold, so we'll see if um, the Green Building Council agrees with, with us. So. so anyway, that's really a good thing. And that's all I have for the director's report, Ex unless you have any questions or other items. No. Does that... Commissioner Martin, did you have... I do not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> you looked like you were dying to say something. I was being good. <laughs> By you telling me. Um, but I, since I don't know whether we'll have a December meeting, um, I wanted to recognize Commissioner Johnson and our Chair Khan for their service to the city and to the airport and airport commission. And this is for Dolores Johnson, Commissioner. Adam the raccoon? Yeah. all the children here. This is a uh, picture of the watercolor of the new terminal and then the courtyard between the historic terminal and the new terminal. And it says, 
uh, Commissioner Dolores Johnson, in appreciation of your service to Airport Commission 2005 to 2009. Thank you. And thank you very much. Karen M. Kahn, in appreciation for your outstanding service and dedication to Airport Commission 2001-2009. And I think you have a plaque from the last time <laughs> before that. And thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Um, Representing the community as well as general aviation and commercial aviation with your uh, experience in both areas. And <laughs> yeah. You engraved your gavel, uh, and this is Karen M. Kahn, 2001 to 2009, in appreciation. So you can... Okay. <laughs> 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 it's been a privilege to serve, and I'm, I'm looking forward at being able to sit in the audience and make, make a few comments. And, uh, <laughs> I will look forward to reapplying because I kind of feel like I have an opportunity to represent a lot of different interests as both a, a pilot and an mm -hmm. owner and a, uh, someone with some experience here. I look forward to returning when that is possible. Great. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Karen. I'll miss you. <laughs> That concludes my we, director's report. And we had one request from Dolores um, after our adjournment. We wanted to get a photograph of all of the commission since we all happen to be here. So if we will all hang out a little bit. Do we have a we, and the staff. No, we have, we have a camera, though. And the staff. I've got mine, and you know me, one? I do pictures. So. Okay. <laughs> so Great. thank you. If there is a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Okay, we don't even have to vote on that. <laughs> we are adjourned.